campus. So all those uh, kiddos, kindergarten up to fifth grade, can make their way uh, next door. So continuing on in our series, Emmanuel, God with us. And we talk about God bringing love into this world. He brought hope into this world. How Christ, think about this, that God, the creator of the universe, came down into this world uh, to contain himself in flesh. Uh, I think the most powerful thing, if you think about it for a minute, is that God came here and kind of played by our rules. You know, if I had the power of God, oh, the world would be so different. Uh, you know, Right? Uh, I, 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 no, I, if I was really be honest, if you don't tell anyone, if I could be really honest, it, there would be like ink blots because there'd be people I'd be just like, Bzzzt. you know, gas stations I would just drive by because my car would always be continually over, you know, right? I mean, yeah, I wouldn't have to pay for gas, utilities. It'd be like 80 degrees with a foot of snow on the ground which would really mess people up. Because I'm not anti-snow, I just don't like cold, right? The dog would be self-cleaning. I mean, all these things, if you had the power of God. But God came into this world and lived like us. The Bible says he was hungry, he was thirsty, he struggled. He knows what it's like to be betrayed. He knows what it's like to be alone. He knows what it's like to suffer loss. All these things that we, as humans, seek out to escape from. He came in here so that he can associate with us. And I love that passage in Hebrews. Uh, because of this, we have a high priest who knows and understands. And because of this, we can come boldly before his throne Right? I can come to God and say, God, I've had a bad day. He goes, yeah, tell me about it. I know. I've been there. Right? He goes, go ahead, tell me more. What a wonderful God we serve. It. God came here. And so we talk about God bringing hope and God bringing love. And before we get into Christmas, I want to talk about he came to bring peace. And I can't think of a, a better sermon to have at a better time than now because uh, I'm a news junkie, and you guys know that. I, and even I've gotten to the point where I, I got to turn it off. Right? I mean, all the fighting and oh, just the bickering and the turmoil. And then, was it just this past weekend? Uh, was there just two more shootings? And you look at the turmoil and... Just a mosque was attacked just this weekend. And, and sometimes I wonder, Lord, you know, how, how far are you going to let this go? Talk about the idea of peace. I think that's something that we all long for. You know, it's been, it's been a busy, busy year. I'm looking forward to January of kind of a, kind of a respite, you know. The holiday times are busy. You know how it is. And unfortunately, I, I don't know about you, but over the years, this year hasn't been quite so bad. And I think it's because I've been so busy, I haven't thought about it this year. But it got to the point where, we, you know, it comes in the season, you come into, you know, October, then November, December, and you're shopping and getting and feeding and eating and, and doing all those things. And you kind of just like, I can't wait till it's all over. Right? You get to that point? It's like, ah. Oh. And what the problem is, is, you know, we talk about celebrating Christ's birth. We talk about, you know, even Thanksgiving, getting together with family and friends, be thankful. These are all good things. They really are great things. The problem is all the stuff we've added on to it all. The expectations. We made a mistake. I went to Walmart on Friday. Not to get a Christmas gift. Not that all my shopping is done. I'm still just waiting for Amazon to come show that, bring that, drop it off. So I don't have to, but we had to go in there for something. So I went to Walmart 
And uh, just, just for fun, because I'm weird, uh, went by the toy section. And I love it because every year you see these people who are like, you know, it's going to end. It's, you know, just grab something. Right? You know, and there's a couple there and they grab a gift off. You know, do you think Susie's going to like this? Doesn't matter. We're getting it. Throw it in the cart. Right? It just, ah. And that call for, for just peace and calm just seems so surreal, I think, sometimes. And yet God came, and he stresses us to bring peace. Of course, out of the Christmas account, in the book of Luke, chapter uh, 2, it says, And the angel of the Lord said to them, this is the shepherds out on the hilltop, and the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. That Christ's title, one of his names, you see, is the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace has come. That desire of peace. A desire. Sometimes just for a nap. You know, I've gotten to that age. You know, I remember telling my daughter when she was younger, it's nap time. I don't want to. Like, kid, you don't know how lucky you are. You know? You've been bad. Go to your room. If I'm bad, can I go to my room? <laughs> Just that, that peace, that solitude, that, that reprieve. The Prince of Peace has come and I don't know if that's had a real big impact on me and the struggle in that. And so in here, I want to talk about three things. We all talk about the peace of God. So we go in here that when God came, he brings, brings peace. First one is if we have peace with God. The, the core of it all is, think about this. We have God, our creator, who formed us and made us. We are the work of his hands. And because of sin, we're out of joint with that. And I was thinking about this this week. We talk about the relationship we have with God. And probably the closest thing we can have is, is some of you have family that you're at odds with. And that is a miserable feeling to have, isn't it? I mean, this time of year probably brings out a lot, you know. Oh, everyone's going over to— I'm picking on Susie. We, we don't have a Susie here, right? Okay. You know, everyone's going over to Susie's house. Except for Aunt Betty. We don't have a Betty either, right? Okay, good. All right, right? Except for Aunt Betty. Well, because this year, and you know what she did? Right? And so Aunt Betty's out, and Aunt Betty's like, well, they're all getting together. I don't want to be there anyways. Right? May they choke on their fruitcake. Hmm. Right? And you see that turmoil, and it just tears. Parents separated from children because of strife, because of years of history, all these things, right? And that disjointedness that happens when families are broken up. How much more so when man, because of my decisions, of my choices, I'm separated from God, my creator, when I'm out of sync? No wonder why. I don't have peace sometimes because God designed me a certain way and I want to go a different way. Right? And it doesn't fit. It, it doesn't function well. You know, if I need a hammer and I reach into the, the toolbox and I pull out a screwdriver, a screwdriver makes a horrible hammer, but I'm going to use it anyways. Right? When I'm going against my Creator and how He made me, you talk about the idea of God being our judge. Not only did he create us, but someday we're all going to stand before him and give an account for our lives. And that scares me sometimes. I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus Christ that he paid for it all. But knowing 
of all the things that are known and probably scarier is all the things that are not known. They'll have to give an account for. And all these things bring turmoil in their lives and separate us from the peace of God. And yet because Christ came, because God came into this world, he came to die. He came to take the penalty for our sins. He came to make that peace. Romans is, Roman tells us, therefore, having been justified by faith, that word justified just means made right. I remember in Sunday school, we had a teacher, to this day I still remember it, justified, just as this I've never sinned. God has come down, and he has declared us just, even though we're not, because he took all my f- failures. He took all that on himself. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. He has declared me righteous. I don't deserve it, but he does. And then here he tells us I can stand before him. I'm not worthy to stand before God. Old wretched man and I am, and all the shortcomings and the sins and failures. God says, no, no, no. I'm clothing you in God's righteousness, in Christ's righteousness. And come on in. Like, I don't belong here. Have you ever been in a place where you're kind of outclassed? Right? You ever gone to like a fancy restaurant or a fancy hotel? And you're kind of like, I don't, I shouldn't be here. You know, I'm not a highfalutin. Years ago, my wife went to the Kodak Theater in Rochester, New York, and she had a chance to go see the Russian Ballet perform the Nutcracker. And she called me, and uh, she goes, the bathroom is bigger than our house. You know, chandeliers and fancy. It's just like, I'm afraid to touch anything, right? I mean, we, we don't belong here, and yet when we, God says, come on in. It's safe. Because through Christ, we have peace with God. We are no longer his enemies. Because each one of us, if you were to write down all the wrong we've done, would fill up a lot. And in the Old Testament days, what would happen was they would turn around and write, and, and, and they would take it, and they didn't have the, you know, they didn't have the journal and so, you know, the post thing, so what they would do is they'd go down to the wall, they would hang up. You know, John was guilty of this. And everyone would walk by the wall and read all the gossip. It was, you know. And so in that context, Paul talks about here in Colossians, is having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way and having nailed it to the cross. And this is just a wonderful picture. I'm pretty visual, so all I can picture is that, you know, all my sin gets nailed and put on the wall for public display. And Jesus, when he came here to earth to die for me and for you, he took all those things, all those clippings, and he put them on the cross. That is the exciting thing. All of that has been taken now. All that animosity towards God and us. All those things that stood in the way. Right? I mean, have you ever been at odds with your, your, with your spouse? Right? <laughs> I'm not asking for testimonies, right? right? But you, you have that odds, right? And then nothing falls into place. Right? It, it used to be the saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Right? When, when that turmoil and strife takes place in our homes, it just trickles over into everything. But when there's peace and happiness and harmony, everything's coming up roses. Right? That's how it is with God. All that stuff that we've done, all that garbage has now been taken care of. And we can come to him. And, and we're like, I'm not worthy. He says, you don't have to be. I paid for it all. He took all those things that were written against us and nailed it to the cross. Romans and John do a contrast here. It says, For when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Think about that. 
Folks, if we haven't accepted Christ as our Savior, his forgiveness, God says we're his enemies. We're opposed to him. That's why things are going so bad in the world. We're getting further away from him, further away from his will. We're not teaching our kids how to pray, read the Bible anymore. We're not teaching them these things. And they're getting further away from the creator, God. And it's enemy. There's a war going on. We see it being played out in the lives and souls of those around us. I'm convinced that's our problem in the world. What they need is Christ and have peace with him and bring us together. And I love John turns around. Look, we were were enemies, right? I was an enemy of God, but but he died for me and I accepted him and asked him to come into my life and forgive me. And he does this. And then he brings down to John chapter 1 says, look, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, to those who believe in his name. What a contrast that is. I've gone from being his enemy and now being his child. Not just a friend, but a, a child within the family of God. Now just think about this. That if you've accepted Christ and I've accepted Christ, and you're a child of God, I'm a child of God, then we're siblings. So I'm going to show up for Christmas. I don't know what we're having for dinner. But think about this. All those things. Right? We have peace with God. Now, probably the biggest bill that some of you would have is your mortgage in your house. That overwhelming debt, that credit. Imagine, if you will, if that was taken and I said, you know, Merry Christmas. I'm taking your, all your guys' bills and I'll pay for them all. <laughs> yeah. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> um, I can't remember where I was this week. I was doing something and I was writing a check which is really odd because there's only a few times I write checks. Oh, I was down in the town office. I was going to say, there's very few times I actually write checks anymore. I was down in the town office, and I was writing a check, and uh, one of the gentlemen came out from the office and said, oh, you're handing those out? I said, sure. He goes, just give it to me blank. I said, go ahead. You can write any number on there. It's going to have the same result. Right? You're only getting so much out of it. Right? I can't pay your debt because I got my own. But Jesus came had no sin, didn't deserve any of it. And he took our debt upon himself, and he paid for it all. I love the old hymn, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. That's an amazing, powerful thing in our lives, that Jesus took the penalty for all these things. And now I have peace with God. I've gone from being his enemy, and now I'm his child. And folks, that flows over in every other area of my life. Because he came. Second thing, he turns around, he comes and brings peace. That we have a peace of God. Notice the first one was peace with God, now I have a peace of God. That now in my life, because now he lives in me and dwells in me, now I serve him. That it changes my mentality, my attitude. It says in John uh, 16, These things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And this bridges that gap, right? Because I go out into this world, and I don't know what's going on in your life. Maybe your life is just sunshine and rainbows. Maybe you don't have a problem in the world. Well, God bless you in that. Maybe you're like, you know, things are struggling. Things are hard. You you wake up in the morning and your first thought is, I don't want to get out to bed this morning. I don't want to do this again. And in this, Jesus tells us, look, now that I have Christ in my life, because he came, I can have a peace despite the turmoil, despite the tribulations of this world. Paul says this in Philippians, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. That in this, as we head out into this world, look, it's not going to change all the circumstances in your life. It's not. You know, was it a couple weeks ago I was joking around about, you know, what kind of people get new cars for Christmas? Well, that week my car died. So we're down to one vehicle. It's like, could it be just one more thing? Right? You ever done that? It's like, oh, what else could happen? Just one more thing. And so we, we, we turn around, it's just like, oh, the struggle. 
And, and God's not going to change that. You know, by, by living for God, my car isn't going to be miraculously healed. The transmission is going to work now. You know? But now I can be different on the inside of, of what, how I react to it. Now I, now I have the decision of, am I going to be down or am I going to be joyful? And the peace of God that now I'm reconciled with him, now I know I belong to him, and now I know he loves me. All these things engulf me in everything that I do, and it guards my heart from the fluctuations of this world, right? The roller coaster. Because he's constant. If I keep my eyes on him, then I'm slow and steady. If I look at what's going around, then my life's like this. Right? Does that make sense? I have a peace of God in my heart. What I've learned is God doesn't always calm the storm. I remember when I first became a Christian, I mean, I always thought, you know, God, make it stop. Right? Now, I'm saying, now that I'm a Christian, now I'm going to live for him. Now I'm not going to have any problems. Now everything's going to be great. And then life happened. Sickness and disease and, you know, as a church, we've, we suffer so much loss. You know, I'm talking about in our lives, it's like, oh, you know, my schedule, I don't know if I'm coming or going half the time, and now we're down to one vehicle, and I don't know, my niece, that now these lift nodes are spreaded all out. It's been about a year that my wife's nephew passed away from cancer at age 19, and, and just so many things have just been so overwhelming. And I'm like, okay, Lord, stop it. Right? I've been like, God, you know, if one more thing, and then one more thing, I was like, okay, God, I'll just, <laughs> I'll just trust you. But in the midst of all of that, in the chaos that's around us, okay, Lord, let me keep my eyes on you. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God, I'm going to pray. Pray without ceasing. I remember t preaching a sermon once, and it said, you know, that every time that you, something's going on in your life, pray. And he's like, I'll be praying all the time. Well, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Right? Okay, Lord. Here we go again. Okay, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your wisdom. Lord, I need, right? And just by the act of prayer, uh, music, to put a song in your heart, can tune in and fine-tune your thoughts and attitudes towards him. And all these things, he can guard our hearts. Philippians probably puts the best thing of all. It says, finally, brother, what are things that are true? What are things that are noble? What are things that are just? What are things that are pure? What are things that are lovely? What are things that are good report? If there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the what? Peace of God will be with you. You can choose to focus on all the negative. You can choose on all the bad. You can choose on all the failures. You can choose to look at those things and focus on those things. Or you can choose to look at this list. And I, I can at first, you know, we go through this verse. It's like, this is a long verse. There's a lot of things here. And I'm like, wait a minute. Think about this. Think of all the things that you can praise God for. No matter what's going on in your life, we have so many things, all the blessings of God, and we've gotten so used to it that we don't even see them anymore. You know, I always kind of like it when, you ever had a kid come up, you know, when your kiddo comes up and says, you know, it's not fair. I don't got nothing. Like, kid, you can't even get in your room with all the stuff you have, right? You know, there are kids that are hungry. There are kids that have nothing. There are kids that are cold. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. But I'm no different. When I walk with the Lord, I get so selfish and so self-centered. I'm looking at all the things I don't have, and I'm looking at all the things that I failed on, instead of looking at the blessings I can have this week. I can help but think. You know, praise God. I have a wife who loves me. I got a kid who adores me. I have a church. They haven't kicked me out yet. Right? You guys have just been a joy and a blessing to us and our family. Right? That time and time again, I can turn around. There's the blessings that we have. Boys. And I can lift my hands up and lift my heart up and lift my voice out. And I'll tell you, all of a sudden, my step has a skip in it. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report. 
Focus on these things in your life. So old hymnist says, count your blessings, name them one by one. And it will. It will transform you. And the peace of God, the scripture says, as I focus on these things, the peace of God, because it reminds me he's here. He has not forgotten me. I am not abandoned. I am not unloved. He is all that I need. And he'll see me through whatever situation I'm in. The peace of God. I got one more point. That here, Emmanuel, God with us, bringing peace. We have peace with each other. We can have peace with those around us. The Bible says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. God wants us to be seeking peace with one another. That's his desire. He told his church before he left, he goes that the church would be one as the Father and Jesus is one. His desire is for us to get along. Now, my kids are 16 years apart. You know, so we, we had two kids, but two different families. You know, so we didn't have to deal with that whole backseat of the car. She's touching me, right? I remember because we grew up with five kids in our home, and us kids didn't get along. I, we, right? And, and now I'm thinking back as an adult, my poor mom had to put up with us kids fighting like dogs, cats and dogs. Right? How, how, I remember, I remember you know, you heard one point, where we pushed her too far. I don't know if you've ever done that. Because we were doing, I can't remember what it was, we were fighting and bickering, and, and, and all of a sudden my mom looked at us, and she had this like crazy look on her face. <laughs> and she's like, I've had it with you guys. And I don't know, I was probably about fourth grade, so what, about nine, ten years old. And she goes, I've had it. Go to your rooms. And I've never seen this crazy look on her face before. So we, we, you know. And about five minutes went by, and she came in, and she grabbed me by the ear and dragged me into the other room. Grabbed my brother and brought us into this one room. And my sister, she went in and got my sister. We got all three of us in one room. And she goes, you guys going to act like babies? I'm going to treat you like babies. And she gave us all a baby bottle full of milk. And she goes, you guys can't come out of this room until those bottles are empty. This is probably child abuse. <laughs> so you suck us in one room and we're all looking at each other like, all right, guys. And so we sucked on those bottles and after a while we started laughing and then after a while we, it just kind of took the tension so loud. And it, it took us like a half hour. It's hard to suck of a bottle. Kudos to these babies that do it. It's tough to do. And so we were in there like a half hour. And finally we came out and oh, the tensions were all gone and my mom looked at us and she's like, what took you guys so long? She goes, you should have just taken the caps off the bottles. I was like, oh, right? But her point was, she, her desire above everything else was that all her kids would get along. And we were acting like babies, she's going to treat us like babies. God wants us to get along. It says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Our goal should be to seek out peace. And I can't think of it during the holiday seasons and the families and everyone's getting along. And I always, I always felt a little out of place because they say the two things you shouldn't talk about is politics and religion. And I like politics and look what I do for a living. So I, I, I'm hosed. My wife just tells me, don't say anything. Right? We're getting together with the family. He goes, don't say too much. Because, oh, what do you think about you know, politics? Or what do you think? I was like, all right. But Romans 12 tells us, especially as Christians with one another, to be of the same mind towards one another. Do not set your minds on high things, but associate with the humble. I said, do not be wise in your own opinion. Basically, you know what one of the solutions of how I get along with everyone? Get off my high horse. I don't always have to be right. I don't always have to have the last word. Humble myself. <sighs> Leave my pride at the door. Repay no one evil for evil, right? Well, she did it first. I'm 50, you know, two years old. 
right? He's like, still, all of a sudden, you get together with his family and friends, right? And he did it first. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for the good things in the sight of all men. And if possible, as much as it depends on you, live peacefully with all men. And I want to take that last bit. As much as it depends on you. Because we talk about the idea of peace. You know what? Being a Christian, does that mean you get along with everyone? No. Does that mean everyone's going to like you? No. Jesus Christ, the perfect man, people hated him and people sought to kill him. And what chance do I have? But as much as depends on me, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Over the years, I've done a lot of counseling, and sometimes I've got to listen to my own words. I said, don't let the ball stop in your court. Does anyone here play tennis? You've all seen it on TV, right? Okay. I'm always in danger when I get into sports analogies because I'm horrible at sports. But think of your relationship with others, right? Tit for tat, what you do. The Bible says, as much as it depends on me, live peace with all men, right? If the ball's in my court, do I need to apologize? Do I need to be humble? Do I need, I do all I can on my side of things to make things right. And then what that does is put the ball into their court. You know what? I have no control what happens on their side of the court. Years ago, I was first in the ministry, a woman came to me and goes, Pastor, will you change my husband? No, I, I can't change anybody. Right? I, I'm just responsible for, for me. And so we think of the struggle that we have, and there are people that maybe you don't get along with. Maybe there's family issues that's going on, and sometimes they're deep-rooted, right? I'm not trying to gloss us over and say everything's going to be rosy. What I can tell you is, take care of your court. What do I have to do? Do I have to swallow my pride and maybe apologize? Do I need to extend? Maybe do I need to invite? Do I need to do what's on my side of things? You can say, yeah, but pastor, they're going to say no, or they're going to yell at me, or they're going to, right? I don't care. I don't care. Because you can't control what they do with it. All I can tell you, as much as it depends on you, live peace be with all men. And there's going to be times when it's not going to work. But as you stand before God and give an account and say, God, I did everything I could on my side. I reached out. I extended. The Bible says about, I don't know, how many times should I forgive? Seven times? No, seven times 70. It should be do everything I can on my side of things because Jesus Christ came and he did it all that I can be reconciled with him. So in here, God with us. We talk about bringing hope, bringing love, and then ultimately bringing peace. Now this morning, I hope you have the peace of God within your life. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the peace that we have. Lord, it all begins with our relationship with you. Lord, cleanse us. Clear our minds and thoughts of everything but you. Lord, give us your peace. And Lord, help us to share that and reach that out to those around us, Lord. We ask this in your name.